Hey guys, we are looking at some absolute value inequalities and these are kind of our special cases, okay? So we're gonna take a look at these when we have a negative here. And I know this one isn't negative, but it will be once we simplify it down, okay? So when we are solving um, absolute value inequalities, there's four possible answers we can get. It's an and inequality, an or inequality, no solution or all real numbers, okay? On this one, we are going to have one of these that's going to be no solution, and one of them is going to be all real numbers, which you can write like that, okay? So let's go ahead and look at this first one. Whenever I'm solving these, the first thing I wanna do is get my absolute value bars alone on one side of my inequality, so we're good here. They're by themselves, right? From there, we just kind of think about it logically, okay? I know, what, logic? When I'm looking at this, I have a negative 10. Now, if I remember what absolute value means, it's asking for a distance, right? It's asking how far is the number inside of here from zero? And we can't have a negative distance, right? You can't walk negative two miles, right? <laughs> You could try, but you can't. So the answer to an absolute value is always positive, okay? Even if I plug in a negative number, right? If I have the absolute value of negative 100, well, the absolute value of negative 100 is 100, right? So it's positive. So whatever I plug in here will always come out positive, right? And will a positive number ever be less than a negative number? It won't, right? So this is a case where there is no solution, okay? So as you are working on problems like this, once you get your absolute value bars alone on one side of the inequality, if you are left with a negative on the other side, that's when you should have alarm bells going off going, okay, this is either gonna be no solution or all real numbers, right? So there's one example. I bet you can guess what this one's going to be, okay? Again, right now, it doesn't look very suspicious, right? But I want my absolute value bars alone, which means I need to divide both sides by negative three, right? Okay, first of all, I should have alarm bells going off because I divided by a negative. Do you remember what we do? If we ever multiply or divide by a negative on both sides when we're doing inequalities is we flip that sign, okay? So, these cancel and this is going to look like the absolute value of x plus one. I flip that sign because I divided by a negative three. If you're wondering why we flip the sign, I'll link a video in the corner. 12 divided by negative three is negative four, right? Okay, my absolute value bars are alone and I should have alarm bells going off again because my absolute value bars are alone and I've got a negative over here, okay? So that's when I'm automatically like, okay, this is either going to be all real numbers or no solution, okay? Again, we're going to think about it logically. Any number I plug in here will end up with a positive answer, right? Because it's absolute value. Is a positive number ever, well, let's, let's do this. Is this always going to be true? Is a positive always going to be greater than or equal to a negative? It's not going to be equal to, but we don't really need to worry about that it's always going to be greater than a negative, right? So I could plug in any number for x. The I could plug in negative 5,000, right? And the absolute value of whatever that is will end up being positive, okay? So a positive is always going to be bigger than a negative. So I can plug in any number and it'll be, this inequality will be true, okay? So the solution for that one is all real numbers, okay? All right, I hope this made sense. If you need some more examples, I'm gonna link a whole playlist for you. I hope this made sense, thanks.